Blood Music by Greg Bear. So this is episode three of a series I'm doing, The Masterpieces of Science Fiction. I'll link the series announcement video down in the description if you haven't watched that yet. So this is the first book I've read by Greg Bear. Kind of ashamed to admit that. He was he wrote this book in 1985, and this was kind of an expansion of a short story he wrote I think a couple years earlier maybe like 1983 and I believe that short story was just kind of the intro of this book or the beginning part of the book and then he later expanded it and took took the story a little bit further so this story it, it I'll, I'll talk about the setup. I believe the setup is all spoiler free. And then I'll briefly mention kind of what happens later on the book, but can't really get into too much of that without spoiling the meat of this story. So the, the premise of this book, it starts off based around this uh, main character named Virgil. And he works for a bioengineering company down in uh, like right outside of San Diego in La Jolla there's like this area that they call Enzyme Valley it's it's a bit of a take on Silicon Valley but more for bioengineering and so he works for some, one of these companies down there and there's all these companies kind of startups and companies vying to get a space in this uh, bioengineering world and they're kind of competing and all on the edge of um, uncovering some secrets in bioengineering. Now this was written in 1985 and I believe it, it was pretty much on the cutting edge of nanotechnology and um, this whole biotechnology um, movement. So pretty interesting to see how how he wrote the you know he wrote this book in the 80s and it definitely seemed like it was when I was reading it I was kind of surprised to see that it was written so long ago um, so anyways this this main character Virgil he works for this company and he's kind of working for the company but at the same time he gets access to the lab and that that was his real motivation and he is doing some research that almost is exceeding this the research that's done by this company and he's kind of kept it secret and he has some some plans to maybe take this and start up his own company and become rich and famous and all that i don't i don't think the rich and famous thing is like his main motivation but he's definitely not really uh a company man, I guess you would say. So the company kind of figures out what's going on and it's a dicey situation because he's he's playing around with things he probably shouldn't and he could end up getting the company in trouble, um, you know, with the F FDA and some of these other uh, regulatory agencies. So it's kind of this dicey situation that he's he's gotten himself into and the company. And so they kind of go back and forth of what how they're going to handle this. And they end up kind of deciding to let him go and kind of escort him out of the, the building. Um, on his way out, he, he has this research that he knows is going to get lost in, in the company. And he can't really take it with him. So in a last ditch effort, he, he injects himself with something he's been working on thinking it's the only way to safely get it out of the the company and then he'll he's he's kind of thinking later I'll get to another lab and I'll try to um, you know get this stuff back and continue my research without losing everything so that's the basic setup of the book and w once he injects himself with this research he's been doing that's where the book kind of goes into a whole nother realm. And, and like I said, I don't really want to talk too much more about that because it'll really spoil the meat of this book. And I think what's 
kind of the most interesting part of this book. I will say it it's, it has to do with kind of nanotechnology and these intelligent, uh, you know, entities that he's created, I guess you could say. And once he get, once they get into his body, they kind of evolve into a whole nother thing. And the book, you know, Greg Bear does a really good job explaining some of this. It, there's some a bit of hard science fiction elements a little bit um, when it comes to the biotechnology, but it's it's not it's not. I wouldn't really consider this a hard science fiction book. That's all, about all I'm going to say for the plot. It, it's a short book. It was, it was 250 pages. It, it's a bunch of very short chapters. It, it reads kind of like a science fiction thriller. So let's get into the pros and cons of this book. For the pros, I would say it read pretty quickly. Like I said, short chapters, fast pace bounce between some characters throughout the book and I always kind of was intrigued by the characters. I never got to a character's chapter where I was dreading it or anything like that. Uh, the science aspect for a book written in the 80s, this was on the cutting edge of a lot of concepts and ideas in the biotechnology realm. So really ahead of its its time I think for for those kind of aspects and overall it was just a, a fun entertaining read for some cons I was really hoping for a little bit more of a finale or ending to this book I, I think the ending was good but the way the book was set up and how the middle chapters went I was really expecting something else and that's just my expectations not really meeting up with what Greg Bear wrote um, but I, I felt like it left it left me hanging a little bit I'm, I'm still not sure how I feel about the ending if everything was resolved if if I if I feel satisfied completely from the ending so That'd probably be the biggest negative for me. I think this is a very approachable science fiction book. I think you could recommend this to pretty much anybody. It, you don't need to read a lot of science fiction books to, to understand this. I think this would be fairly good for entry level, maybe not very beginning science fiction readers, but if you've read a couple science fiction books and enjoyed it, just jump into this. It's it's not a difficult read. It's entertaining. It brings up some interesting concepts. It's all kind of takes place in the present day of the 80s, so there's nothing too alien or you don't have to stretch your imagination too much with the setting. Now, the book itself goes into some very interesting places, and that will stretch your imagination to understand that. But like I said, his the writing style, the way he wrote it, it, it was very visual and it was very easy for me to understand and to visualize what he was trying to um, come up with in this book. So that's about it. I think this was a great read and I think I'll give it four stars on Goodreads. I'm not sure what I'm going to read next, if it's going to be another entry in the Masterpieces of Science Fiction series I'm doing, or if I'm going to jump into something else. But I just keep an eye on the channel, and those reviews will come out as I finish the books. So thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you next time.